Hey there, welcome. We're going to continue with lesson 1.2, part A, your first interactive UI. So let's take a look at the website for a second to review where we are and what we're doing. Here I am at developers.google.com slash training. And if we go to the Android section, we are looking at the Android Developer Fundamentals version two course. I click the course overview. What I'm doing is going through the code labs or practicals, all the code examples within this course. So you can look at these by going to code labs and this is what we're referring to. I've already done the introduction and the hello world. Those videos are already in this playlist. Now we're gonna do your first interactive UI. You can certainly go through all of this text here. I'm gonna be covering everything uh, generally within uh, most everything. I'll, I'll talk about everything that they mentioned, although they may go into more detail. So be sure to read that on your own. And this is what the app will look like when we're done. So with that, I'm not gonna go over this website very often. So be sure to bookmark this so that you can refer to it in the other videos. Let's go to Android Studio and create a new Android Studio project. We're gonna call this Hello Toast. And for company domain, you can use your own domain name. Uh, it just has to be unique if you're trying to publish a real app. Notice this is the package name that it comes up with based on the title and your domain. We're not going to do C++ or Kotlin support for this, so go ahead and choose Next. Here it says uh, phone and tablet, and then you choose your minimum SDK. What that means is every Android device has a version of the operating system it runs. And API 15, which represents Ice Cream Sandwich, has been around for a long time. This says it will run on approximately 100% of devices. Well, what that really means is 100% of devices that support Google Play. Android is available for lots of devices and there's a lot of really inexpensive devices that are not very powerful, don't have the hardware for it. Google doesn't necessarily certify every device, but in order to use Google Play, which allows you to install all their apps, you meet certain standards. So they're saying of the devices that can run Google Play, this is supported on the majority of them. So you're pretty good if you can target that. Go ahead and choose next. And we want an empty activity and choose next and go with the default here and choose finish. It may take a while if this is the first time you've launched an app, uh, you may have to download a bunch of dependencies, uh, but as you use the product, it goes faster. Here we have two files that are open. One is mainactivity.java. This is the class file that represents the source code behind all of the visual elements. The activity underscore main dot XML represents the actual uh, layout of the visual elements on that screen. So these two are tied to each other. Notice in this little, there's this little C, it says related context Java file. If you click that, it opens to the main activity. Well, guess what? Notice what this is. It says related XML file. As you add more uh, layout files, you're gonna have quite a bit and you wanna make sure, oh, this matches that and keep track of it. If you don't see these files, if you look over here on the left in the project window, this organizer shows you all the files for the project. Notice it says Android. If I select that, these are different filters to show you the different things that are available. If I select project, this actually represents uh, the majority, this is what the files look like on your folder structure on the device, your uh, computer. So there's a lot of files here and you don't really interact with them. You don't edit these very often. The ones you do edit are found in, if you filter it by Android, then these are the more common files you're gonna use. If I click Java and I click, here's the package name, there's the main activity file. And if I go to my res folder and I choose layout, here's my activity main XML file. 
All right, let's select the activity main. If you open this file, it may show text or it may say design. If I click design, here we have a visual layout of the elements. Now, yours may look different than this, but mine has an error. And up here, if you look up here, notice this exclamation point. This is a problem. Let's look at that. What is the problem? Render problem. Failed to load app compat action bar with unknown error. Uh, by the time you watch this video, this may have already been fixed, but this is the latest version of Android Studio, and for whatever reason, the, this project template has an error, and this happens. Well, how do you fix it? I just Google it. I look at the error message and then I Google it because somebody else has probably had the same problem. So let's do that. Failed to, and now I've already done this before, but notice it's failed to load app compat action bar with unknown error. I press return. And let's take a look at this first result. Good old, good old snack overflow. Uh, this person has the same problem and there are a couple of answers. Now, this answer here doesn't work for me and it may work in the future, but there's different versions. Um, this is what it is. This is the problem. It's not so much the uh, support library version as it is this problem here where the style has an incorrect style name and notice it says your values, styles, XML, modify this from this to this. Um, note the added base period. Let's do that. Go back to our project. Now, where do we find the styles.xml? Well, he said it's in the res folder and it's in the values folder and there it is, styles. So I double click open that. Here, notice this is where we're gonna change it and it said to say base dot and let's click away and let's save that. Let's go back. And look at that. It works. The error went away and now I can see the elements. Over here on the left, we have this palette window and this is a list of all the components, controls that you can use visually on this layout. Down here is component tree, which lists everything that's currently on the layout. And right now we have a text view that says, hello world. If I go to my text, notice here we're using XML and we have this root element is called a constraint layout. And inside that I have a text view. Well, notice here under component tree, we have constraint layout, which is the parent or root element. And inside that we have the text view. So you can see how those are related. All right, let's delete, whoops, just select and delete this. And let's go and add two buttons. So let's click buttons on the left and then select and drag and let go. And one more button. Constraint layout allows you to place elements on the screen so that you can define constraints that say, I want you to be this close to this side or this close to that side, positioned relative to this element, and you have constraints that define that. Right now, notice we have on here's this called design and here's the blueprint. Notice there's no squiggly lines. The previous one had squiggly lines. Those, those represented the constraints. Well, let's start with the top button, select that, and let's notice how we have this green, so we'll click and drag and let go. What that did is it added a constraint and the constraint, constraint said, stay to the left. Well, let's add a constraint here and guess what? This constraint says, stay to the right. Well, when you have two of them, they balance each other out. You could change this where you could say, I want this constraint to be uh, weighted more so that it has more priority. So that means more of, I want it mostly to the right or mostly to the left. We'll go into that another video. So here we've got our button. Finally, let's do a constraint to the top. Let's do the same thing, except we're gonna click left and right, but we want to constrain to the bottom. Whoops. Click and drag. Now we've got the buttons. 
If you remember what it looked like in the design, these buttons were wide. They were they filled the width of the thing. So to change that, go ahead and choose the button. And um, if you don't see, right now I'm showing, this is all attributes. If I click fewer attributes, this is probably what you would see first. So notice it says layout width. If I come to layout width and I choose match constraint, notice what happens. Now it's saying the width of this button should be whatever the constraints are. And, if, and right now the constraint says left and right, so that's how wide we're going to be. If I select the other button and I click wrap content where it says layout width and I change that to match constraint, and there we are. All right, let's add a text view. Go ahead and choose text view and click and drag. This text view, uh, we need to add constraints. Well, we want it to be between the buttons, so we're going to say top button and then click and drag and bottom button, and then we want it to be constrained to the left and constrained to the right. Okay, very good. Now we need to change some attributes. Let's go to the first button and let's change this. Let me pull up my notes and let's Okay, this first button, we're going to say, and we're going to call this button underscore toast. The ID is used to uh, reference this button in code. So we've, we, we have two buttons and you need to know the difference. Well, they can't be the same ID. So here we say this is button underscore toast and we're going to change this one as well. So here we have it button underscore toast. Next. Um, we're going to change the background. Uh, what uh, update all references? Uh, update usages as well. Uh, yes. Go for yes when it asks for that. I didn't know. Why, I don't know why I did that. Okay. For background, we're going to add a color. We're going to reference it by a attribute. We're going to say at color slash color, and notice how it auto-completes color primary. Go ahead and press tab, and now we have a primary color. Now, where does that come from? Well, if you saw already in our values folder, we have an XML file called colors. Go ahead and open that. Check it out. We have resource values for color primary, dark, and color accent. Over here, it shows you what those colors look like, and those are the values. The reason you do this, we use resource files. That's what the res folder means, resource. It refers to resource files. These are files that reference values used throughout the app. You want to centralize these values in order to keep track of uh, changes so that you have one location to make changes to your colors, to your theme, and to strings. We'll talk about that in a second. So we've got a color. Let's go back to the main activity main, and we've set the color. Now, unfortunately, the text color, we can't read it. So if I, here we have kind of the first screen of all the attributes. If I click view, this is everything. This is everything we can change. And what I want is text color. Scroll all the way down, and I say text color. Now, there are some default colors you can use, and to reference them, we're going to say at Android slash color slash, whoops, color, sorry, Android colon, I meant to say Android colon, <laughs> color slash, and then white is the color we want. So now the button text works, and that's easier to read. Next, uh, let's go back to the fewer attributes. And the text for the button is going to be toast. All right, let's go to our other button. And let's do similar. Now, this, we're going to change the ID. And the button ID here is going to be, let me look at my notes. OK, button count, button underscore count is the ID. Uh, we need to do the same thing for the background, and so we're going to say at color. Now notice under the 
uh, auto suggestion, auto complete, it will show you the recently used values towards the top. So I've recently used color primary, so I'm just going to tab and that fills it in. Um, the, the next, the button text, I'm going to change this to count and then I need to change the text color. And, and so the text color again at Android and remember we've used this recently. So I just pressed tab to auto complete. All right. Very good. Let's go to our text view and let's make changes to those attributes. Okay. Under the attributes, uh, let's go back to the fewer attributes and let's give this a text ID. The ID we want is show underscore count. Now, uh, we want the, the width and height of this text to fill the constraint. So let's say match constraint and match constraint. So notice what happens is it resized it completely. So in order to see that, let's change this text and let's just enter the, the, the number zero because that represents the value. Now, obviously that's not very big, so let's fix that. So select the text. Let's go to our all attributes and we're going to change a few things. The first is change size, text size. And we want this to be 160 SP and that stands for screen pixels or screen independent pixels. We'll talk about that in another video, but the, the reason is you don't want to use pixels. You want to use uh, independent pixels, which means it'll show up relatively the same between a low density device and a high density device. Okay. 160, uh, text color, we want this to also be the color primary. And then notice how it's off centered. It's, it's, it's justified to the left and up to the top. We can change that by changing what is called gravity and gravity suggests whether something is centered or leans to one way or the other. And if I go to gravity, notice, notice if I click gravity and I twirl open that, it says center vertical and center horizontal. So now we're centered. Okay. Uh, we want to change what else? Text style. So go back to text style. Notice text style has a few options. I want bold and now we're bolded. And finally, we want to change the background color. So if I go back here to background, I want to change this. So let's, enter a hex value and hex value is represented by the pound sign and then four letter capital F's F F F F and then zero zero and press return. Now we have this beautiful bright yellow with blue text. Okay. I'm going to pause. We're going to go to another video because it's getting pretty long. So remember to subscribe and check out the next video. Someone going to answer that phone? I'm just waiting for you to subscribe. Sorry.